So let's look at the graphs of some of our trigonometric functions using Maple. So let's start by looking at the graphs of sine and cosine. And sine and cosine each have period 2 pi, which means they repeat themselves at intervals of length 2 pi. So we're going to graph sine and cosine on the same graph over two periods or two repetition. So we plot cosine of x and sine of x. You don't need to define a new function f taking x to cosine of x. You've already got these nice predefined functions in Maple. We're going to graph them over two periods. So that's a domain of negative 2 pi to pi. And the range of both sine and cosine is negative 1 to 1. So we'll just graph it over its range. Throw in a legend so we can see exactly how these graphs relate. And maybe we can specify colors, red and blue. And you know, let's throw in a command we haven't used before and specify that one graph should be thicker than the other. So we'll use thickness equals to one. So what this command is trying to do is tell Maple to graph cosine x and sine x on the same graph from negative 2 pi to, oops, we want to go all the way to 2 pi. So from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, with y going from negative 1 to 1, with a legend at the bottom, with cosine in red, sine in blue, and the cosine line twice as thick as the sine line. And there we are. We have our graph. You see in blue, we have our slightly thinner sine line. And in red, we have our slightly thicker cosine line. And we see that the graphs of sine and cosine are very similar. They just look shifted over a bit. How much is sine shifted from cosine or vice versa? Well, cosine, for example, is what you get when you shift sine over to, say, the left by pi over 2. So they're pi over 2 removed from one another. But otherwise, their graphs look pretty much the same. So now let's take a look at the graph of tangent x. So tangent is also periodic. It has a period of pi instead of 2 pi. So we're going to gra graph two periods of the tangent function, which is predefined as the function tan of x. And we're going to go x from negative pi to pi. So that's two periods of tangent. And for the moment, we're not going to specify y. And let's see what happens. And that is a fairly reasonable graph of the tangent function. Occasionally, Maple will default to a really ridiculous range of values for y. And you'll get something that looks like this, which does not at all look like what we expect tangent to look like. And if something like this happens when you're trying to graph something like tangent, take a look and see if your y ranges are super ridiculous. Like here, we're taking y from negative 2,000 to 2,000. If something like this happens, you can always override the y range. to something reasonable. So looking at this, we have something we've seen before. Tangent is a function with lots of vertical asymptotes. So when we just use the plot command, we get these vertical bars where the asymptotes are. And if we like, we can get rid of those. By telling the plot command that it is discontinuous using discont equals true. And there we have our graph without those vertical bars. Another neat thing we can do is add grid lines to our plot, which will put just a grid at each, at each tick mark. And the option for that is just to send plot the option grid lines. So that'll give you your grid lines. So now say you just want the big grid lines. You don't want the little mini tick marks in between or the grid lines that go with them. You can do that as well using the plot option tick marks. Let's throw in tick marks. And to the tick marks command, you give it the spacing and 
special values for trigonometric functions tend to happen at multiples of pi and pi over 2. So we're going to make our tick marks have spacing of pi over 2. Uh, we want just regular style tick marks. So we'll tell it default style. So what this command is saying is to take the graph of tangent of x from negative pi to pi in the x direction and from negative 4 to 4 in the y direction to space our tick marks pi over 2 apart to graph it as a discontinuous function so it suppresses those vertical lines and to put grid lines on the graph. And there we can nicely see the asymptotes of the tangent function, not as an ugly vertical line, but by looking at the grid lines going through the tick marks on the graph. So if we want an extra set of tick marks, splitting those large ones on the x-axis into two so that our grids look fairly square, we would need our tick marks twice as often, so we would space them pi over 4 apart. And we get a graph that looks like that, which looks very nice. So there are some different ways you can represent the tangent function using the plot command in Maple with various options such as tick marks, discount, and grid lines. Now let's take a look at secant and its relationship to cosine. So we're going to plot cosine and secant on the same grid from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, y going from negative 4 to 4 with tick marks. spaced pi over 2 apart, standard style tick marks. Secant happens to be discontinuous, so we're going to go ahead and tell it that discant equals true so we don't get ugly vertical lines in the secant graph with grid lines and a legend. showing both our functions, cosine and secant. And maybe we'll give it a title. So let's see what happens. There's our graph of cosine, which you recognize as this red wave function. And then we have secant, which are these U shapes that basically continue on forever with asymptotes at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2. And this pattern, of course, repeats along with the cosine wave. So one thing this graph demonstrates is that the secant function is actually the reciprocal of the cosine function. So secant of x is 1 over the cosine of x. And you can see that because when cosine is 1, so is secant. But as cosine gets smaller and smaller and smaller, closer to 0, the secant function gets larger and larger and larger, which is the sort of pattern you expect from reciprocals. Let's take a look at a transformation of the sine function and the sort of things that you can expect when you transform a sine function using transformations we've seen before. So let's look at just the regular sine together with 2 times the sine of pi times x over 4. Notice that when we're typing pi times x over 4, we do have to explicitly write the multiplication using the asterisk sign. Otherwise, it'll think we're just saying pix over 4, and it'll say what is pix. So this is sine of pi x over 4. Let's just take y negative 2 to 2. Hopefully, our x's will default OK throw in a legend for both. I'll just copy paste that. And we'll give it a title. Let's say transformation of the sine function. So let's see what this looks like. Well, let's think about what it should look like, first of all. We're taking sine and we're 
inside the argument multiplying by pi over 4. And pi over 4 is smaller than 1. So this should give us a horizontal stretch. So it should widen out the curve a bit. And we're also multiplying the whole thing by 2, which is larger than 1, and should give us a vertical stretch, making the graph taller. And graphing that without specifying the x didn't work out, so let's specify x from 0 to 8. Ah, there we go. What we have here is in red, we have this curve that is our sine function, and in blue we have a similarly shaped curve that is 2 sine of pi over 4 times x. And we see indeed the blue curve is taller, and also its period, the amount of time before it repeats, is wider, which is just what we would expect given the transformations we did to that function. To make it even clearer exactly what it does, we're going to throw in the options for tick marks being spaced pi over 2 and for it to display grid lines. Ah, so here we have that same graph but with some identifying features. So we see that we've doubled the height of the function and we've given it a horizontal multiplier of 4 over pi. We can also use Maple to see how certain polynomial functions can, at least for part of the domain, approximate trigonometric functions very well. And this is not something we will look at doing in this course. If you go on to take some calculus courses, you will probably run into the exact method of approximating trigonometric functions using polynomial functions, but for now let's just look at a graphical example that shows that it's something that can very likely be done. So let's plot sine of x and x minus x cubed over 6 on the same graph. Again, we're not going to go into where we got this polynomial function that we're using. We're going to give it a small domain, so from 0 to 2 because this tends to only work in small domains. And let's give it a legend. So legend equals, and we give it both functions that we are passing to it, and we'll give it a title. Small domain approximation, oops small domain approximation of the sine function by a polynomial function. And we see that on that domain, this polynomial and sine match up really well. And you see when we're getting farther out, they start to diverge a bit more, but for a fairly large domain in the scheme of the real numbers, these two functions are pretty much the same. So hopefully this makes it believable that this is something that can happen, um, using polynomials to approximate trigonometric functions. So those are some of the interesting things that you can see about trigonometric functions just using Maple's plot command and some of the options for it.